Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here. Today I'm taking a look at a tile laying game, the latest from Uva Rosenberg. This is Sagani. In this game, the players are going to be drafting tiles with different elements on them, and you are going to be playing those in a grid in front of you, trying to satisfy positional conditions. Have a blue next to this one, have a red pointing in that direction somewhere, things like that. And you'll be scoring victory points for doing that. Get to a certain threshold before other players, have the most points when everybody's done, and you are going to win the game. This is sort of a, uh, I guess, a spiritual sequel in some ways to Nova Luna, a recent game, kind of a critical darling, but... There are way more uh, differences than similarities between these two games. Really, I mean, there are tiles you take and you build this grid in front of you. Other than that, there are a ton of differences here. Uh, this game is a race game and it's at its core. You are trying to race to a certain number of victory points. And that game was a race game, but that's, that's pretty much it. So, if you're curious, you're in the right place. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this plays. To set up the game, in this case for three players, we're going to give everybody their tokens. They have a score marker that goes on the score track. We shuffle up the tiles, put them in a stack on the table. This is actually not all of them. I set some of them aside over here, but you can just do that. And then once these run out, start working on the other ones. And then uh, we are ready to go. We have a start player over here. The goal for three players is 60 points. As soon as anybody gets to 60 or passes it, we finish out the round so everyone has equal number of turns. And then whoever has the most points is the winner. So here is how the game goes. We're going to flip over five of these tiles, put them on the table like this. And then the start player is going to begin by selecting one of these and putting them in front of them. Uh, orthogonally adjacent to any previous ones they had. For the first one, of course, you can just put it anywhere you want, like so. And then you are going to put a number of your wooden tokens on it equal to the number of arrows on the tile. In this case, there are three arrows there. So we're going to cover up the center of the tile with those, and then the next player will go. And they will select one. They might take this one and put three tokens on that one. The next player will go. They might select that. And this one only has two arrows, so they'll put two tokens on it. Then this player will go over here. They're going to take uh, this one here. And they're going to put it adjacent to this one like this. And this one has four arrows, so four go on there. And then every time you do this, you check if you satisfy any of the conditions. Let me move these aside for a second. As you can see, this tile here that was just taken has a blue arrow pointing up. If at any point any of these uncovered arrows are pointing at something else of the required color, then you can move a token from the center of the tile to cover that arrow, meaning that is satisfied. And as soon as you have moved all the arrows to satisfy the conditions, then this tile is scored. You're going to get as many points as listed in the center, in this case 10, over here on the track. And then you regain these, and then you can flip this over like so. I want to point out that the arrow requirement is does not uh, necessitate adjacency. So, for example, if this tile was way down here and there were other tiles in between, if there's still a green at some point, even up here, that still qualifies for that. Just like this white one up here pointing this way, if at any point there's a white tile in that diagonal direction, then you qualify for that. So, again, uh, back to our example. This player has dealt with the green. There are none here that have been satisfied yet. You can spin these however you want to, by the way. Uh, so, perhaps this player might want to do this instead. Put it up here like that. And they're going to go with that, actually. And then the next player goes, all right? This player is going to take this one. They are going to do uh, something like this. And they will put uh, four on that one, okay, in the center. But if, like that, okay? And then we flip over another five. We keep going with the next player and so on. However, when we are down to the last tile here, if the player who would take that tile, the brown player over here, does not want to take this last one. They can instead take the top one from the stack. You have some information on the back. The six lets you know how many points it's worth. 
which also indicates how many arrows are going to be on it. So like 10 pointers always have the four arrows. The uh, six pointers always have three, okay? So you can choose to do that. This might be better for them. And then this one goes up here to what's called the intermezzo area. So we put it up there. Player flips over this one. They're going to do this like so. They're going to put three on the numbers of the tile. And then uh, the white is satisfied on that first tile that had taken. All right. And now we flip over another five and we keep going with whoever would be next. In this case, this player over here. Whenever you run out of these tiles, and this is a big part of the game, the economy of these, uh, these uh, wooden tokens, okay? Whenever you run out of those and you need to place more on new tiles you have just taken, you are instead going to have to take these red ones. Now, they become part of your general pool from that point on. They are yours to keep for the rest of the game. But for every one you take, you are going to immediately lose two points. And uh, they include negative tiles here in case you are near the bottom of the track and we need to lose further points. You're, you'll likely not need these, all right? But they are included. So be aware of that. Now, the other thing I need to explain, and really the final thing I need to explain, is that as soon as these up here are filled, so again, the players take, 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 this player takes one, this player doesn't want this one, so they leave it up here again and just pull the top one, and again, this happens one more time, and this, this entire process might happen between one and three times, not too many times. But as soon as this is filled up here, then we take a break from the general flow of the game. The players have scored some points by then. And we are going to allow the players to take a tile from up here. The way this happens is in reverse of victory point order. So whoever is losing right now gets the chance to take one of these. So perhaps they'll take that one. It's very useful. That's what they need. They'll take that. Then white would go, they could take one, they might not want one, and then the gray player would go and maybe they want this one and they'll take that one. Once that's done, the rest of these are going to stay up here, and once this is filled again, it'll happen one more time. If none of the players take any of the four up here when this is filled, then we will remove all four, and they will go away, and we continue playing. That's it. That's all the rules in the game. As soon as I said someone crosses 60 in a three-player game or 45 in a four-player game, then we are going to finish out the round. That's what this is important for. And whoever has the most points is the winner. Even though I am not reviewing Nova Luna here, although I, I did that already, you can go check that out if you want to see it, I will say that I like this game more than I like Nova Luna. I think it is more attractive. It's a prettier package. It is also a much easier game to get into. The rules are simpler, more straightforward, but I feel that the game retains its thinkiness. It retains the thing I liked about Nova Luna, this sort of evolving puzzle in front of you, while making the process of getting there a lot more streamlined. It's a lot uh, you know, quicker and easier to get into. So let's talk about this, shall we? I'm going to start with the theme. All I wrote down in my notes was, sure... Uh, there is, if, if you can call the art theme, then sure, but they really, there's no theme here. You're not going to be using it to teach you. It will go away immediately. There is nothing there, okay? This is an abstract game, really, but it has lovely illustrations, and speaking of that, I like the aesthetics of the game. I think it has a great look. I'm glad they went with this cartoony, welcoming, silly look. It's lovely. And then the quality of the components is excellent. The cardboard tiles are holding up very well. They're thick cardboard. The wooden tokens do their job perfectly. They're not too big or too small on the tiles. So they cover up the information they need to without obscuring anything else. Central board is nice. This works very well. The replay value is okay. Some ideas in the game are going to be good in practice no matter what. So the replay value, this uh, sort of concept where in some games, I want to build a deck that does this because of the display of cards out there. But in some games, because of the combination of things, that's a bad idea. No, in this game, the things that are good ideas are good ideas, right? Uh, trying to get the most points the quickest. Trying to make sure you are managing your supply of tokens. Being maybe... 
a point or two below the, the person that you're behind, you know? So that if that the intermezzo bit comes around, you can snatch a towel up before they get a chance to do it. You want to be just below them. These are all good practices in the game. So the replayability really just comes from you adoring the game, not necessarily from any variability, you know, anything that is going to be captivating and, and newly wonderful and surprising the fourth time you play. That's not why you come back to the table. There are other reasons why you come back to the table. Uh, you know, things like, this is a game that's fairly simple, but has some nice depth to it. Things like that. And so that'll keep you coming back. But it's not really the replayability that'll do that, okay? Uh, the game art. Let's talk about that. Because again, I think there are a couple of little issues there. The game has the possibility for a lot of analysis paralysis later in the game. Say the last third of the game, there's going to be a lot of stopping and checking and everybody. If you're not good at a, that sort of visual positioning, you folks will be, you know, doing the whole picking one up and placing it and looking and making sure. And I guess at this point, you no, know, I'll put that back. Um, you know, doing that or just really just staring at them thinking. If you play with more players, that gets worse. Because any planning you did on your turn, after three players... Those tiles will be different. The one you were planning on is that more uh, much likely to be gone. So that's a little bit of an issue. I do like, though, that this is a race game at its core. And it does feel like one. You are racing to a certain number of victory points. And the more risk you take, i.e. the bigger tiles you grab with more rewards, bigger points, the closer you are to spinning out of control by running out of your tokens. That's very clever. I like that mechanism a lot. It's probably my favorite thing in the game. You know, you can take smaller tiles, but then you, you are taking the same number of actions as other players by doing that. And you might just not be able to make up the difference. You can keep some, you know, some of those tokens in the tank, so to speak, but you just might not be able to pull off enough of those, you know, 10-pointers to really run into the, the finish line. So... I think that's clever uh, and, and engaging. Ease of play. Very smooth. Very straightforward. I like the ease of play here quite a bit. I think that's that's excellent. And then lastly, tactics and luck and strategy. That's mostly good, okay? There's going to be a, a great balance, like I said, of rules complexity to puzzliness. There are a couple of issues I have with the luck. For example, sometimes you are looking for a color that just isn't coming up that could happen in the game i need a red tile if in fact in fact if i get a red tile i'm going to be able to put it in this position and knock out both of these because they're both pointing at a red and hey a red here would satisfy both of them great good planning on my part and then red isn't coming up for a while it might not come up before somebody else runs through that finish line so that could certainly be frustrating it's not going to happen every time but it is luck right and so so there is that aspect to it. This is not a pure abstract. It's just it behaves basically like a puzzly abstract with then a little bit of this input randomness. So overall, I do like it. I enjoy my plays of it. I think it is clever. It is so easy to get going in this game. It's a game that starts very simply. And I like that about it as well. You explain a couple of quick rules. You don't even have to explain the uh, intermezzo thing if you don't want to before you start playing. Flip over five tiles, explain the idea of arrows pointing out other ones, go. You can be playing very quickly. When you're finally down to the last tile, and folks have now grabbed a couple, or one, maybe, if you're playing with more players, you can say then, okay, here's your choice now. Yet, it evolves and slowly becomes thinkier and puzzlier, and I, I really like that quite a bit. But, as I stated, there are some issues here as well. If you did not like Nova Luna, I'm not sure you'll like this. I mean, if you like, did not like it, you thought this is this is not a good game, then I'm not sure you'll like this. Some of the things are similar, but if you were lukewarm on it, or you thought it was just, you know, okay, you might like this better. I do. I certainly do. So this is going to get a 7 out of 10 from me. I like it. That means it's going to get a seal of approval. And I would recommend it for someone looking for a light game, one that's pretty, one that feels very welcoming, and yet 
there's going to be some evolving uh, puzzliness there, okay? Yes, coupled with some luck, and yes, coupled with possibly some, some folks freezing up as they have to make choices later in the game, but still, a good time. So, that's going to do it for me, everybody. That, that has been Sagani here, 7 out of 10 once again. My name is Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one.